Okay, it's official. The Raiders are putting their money down on the stadium site right here in the Valley. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dave Provencier. And I'm Denise Valdez. The land at Russell Road and the I-15 has been the preferred location for several months. Today, the team's development company closed escrow on that property. That's where Politics Now co-host Patrick Walker and Sports Director Chris Matthews are live with team coverage of what this real estate deal means. Guys? Well, good afternoon. Yeah, standing here on what most likely would be where the field is. It's hard to imagine, you know, Chris, uh, taking a look at this site and what's behind us and even what we've been through just in the last six months to a year that we'd be talking about, hey, this is where the NFL field is going to go. It is hard to imagine that Mark Davis was here a year ago almost this week where he got in front of the uh, stadium authority board and said, hey, if you build me a stadium, I'll bring my franchise there. And everybody kind of gasped, you would do what? He says, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring the Raiders. They're one of the most iconic NFL franchises in the NFL. Well, here at I-15 and Russell Road, this is a site, of course, as we mentioned, we've been anticipating now for quite a while. There's been some site work that we've seen on uh, on this particular location, looking at core samples and things like that. And after all of that today, the Raiders closing escrow on this, uh, well, 62 acre lot for some seventy seven and a half million dollars. It's under LV Stadium Company, LLC. That's the development company backed by the Raiders. They're the buyer. It's a key step in the financing part of the deal because the Raiders don't get to tap into the seven hundred and fifty million in public funding until the land is purchased and turned over to the stadium authority. Clark County began collecting the added room tax in March and the first deposit into the county coffers last month was four point six million dollars, about twenty five percent of the uh, head of the projected revenue. Now, while things have been moving at a fever pitch to get to this point, County Commission Chairman Steve Sisolak says that pace will have to continue in order to meet all the construction deadlines. So there's a lot of different agencies are working with at the same time here and the county is one of them. But they've been nothing but cooperative and hardworking. I mean, we give them a list of things they need to do. They check them off, they hand them in, they turn them back. All right, so what does this all mean? Now this will fill in really the key blank spot that's been in the pending lease and development agreements. The stadium authority and the team working toward finalizing the documents. So that stadium authority chair Steve uh, Hill also telling me the two sides are pretty close to hammering out those final details. Uh, also in that conversation today, he said, however, it will still be a couple of meetings before the stadium authority accepts this site. They want to do their due diligence, make sure all of the tests check out, uh, make sure everything is on the up and up. But where we've seen where this is going to be heading, Chris, you had a pretty good look at where this has all come from, how this has all come together. Yeah, it came together. We mentioned how quick this has come together, really. And it's for the last six months they've been working on closing this deal. And the gentleman who actually first introduced this plot of land to Raiders owner Mark Davis, we met with him today. And, of course, that is a guy by the name of John Knott. Now, John Knott first approached Mark Davis. He said, hey, this land is surrounded by four streets, has freeway access, it's close to the strip. It suddenly moved to the top of the stadium site lists. It came down to the 62-acre site and the Valley High site just off the strip south of Mandalay Bay. At both locations, parking was a concern, still is with this location, but after closer inspection, it may not be a huge issue if everything falls into place. One of the concerns that the Raiders have is obviously have a stadium, and parking becomes an issue and all of the streets that are around here are uh, non-restricted parking uh, including Sundays <laughs> because it's mostly industrial businesses that are Monday through Friday or the weekends and uh, so I had suggested to Mark talk to uh, Commissioner Sisolak and uh, say keep this uh, unencumbered parking so you, you don't give tickets to our fans on the weekends. All right, little history on the price of the land. At its high point, prior to the recession, it was trading at $300 million. At the low point, $31 million. Today, it closed for $77.5 million. Still lots of pluses to this site, uh, Patrick, when you think about the transportation needs. Of course, walkways to this site, light rail perhaps, mm -hmm. a monorail, uh, freeway, ingress, egress. So a lot of pluses when you think about this is surrounded by four streets. Yeah, we'll have a lot more on that conversation in the coming months and, of course, a lot more coming up for you tonight at 6. With Chris Matthews, I'm Patrick Walker, 8 News Now.